Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be learning how to how to calculate the pH of weak acids and weak bases. It's easier to calculate the pH of strong acids and strong bases because we know they are going to be ionizing completely into the ions. But when we are looking at the weak acids and weak bases, they don't really ionize this completely. And as a result, we're going to have to look at their Ka values. So suppose I got a couple of these questions here that's going to be talking about how you're going to be calculating the, the pH of these weak acids and weak bases. Um, so I have this uh, calculate the pH of 0 0.02 molar uh, carbonic acid solution, which is H2CO3. So remember, this has two protons, so that's going to be a diprotic. Diprotic means it's going to have two Ka values for those acids or for those protons. And it's got uh, this stepwise dissociation constant. So Ka1 is given and the Ka2 is given. Now remember, if your Ka2 is very small compared to the Ka1, and we can clearly see that Ka1 is also actually small to begin with, but then the Ka2 is even smaller than that, it's in the order of 10 to the minus 14. And your Ka1 was in the order of 10 to the minus 7, so that's like roughly 10,000 smaller than the Ka1. So that means your second dissociation or the loss of second proton is going to be very uh, minor or that's really not going to make any difference in the H plus concentration. In those cases, you can ignore the second dissociation. You can just focus on the first loss of proton and figure out how much you're going to lose. So let me go ahead and write down the equation here. So H2CO3 aqueous plus H2O liquid and it's going to be in equilibrium with HCO3 1 minus plus H3O plus aqueous. Now the bottom line is if you can figure out what's your H3O plus concentration is, that's all you really need to figure out the pH and that's exactly what we're going to try to do here. Initially we're told, change the color there, I'm going to make an ice table here because that's just easier to deal with. Initially, we are told we are starting out with 0 0.020 molar carbonic acid. Water is going to be your liquid, so that's not going to be a part of your equilibrium constant expression. So I'm just going to cross that out. And then when I'm looking at uh, your products, you don't have any of those in the beginning. So suppose I'm making... I'm losing X amount of my reactant, and in losing X amount of my reactant, you're going to be making X amount of both of those products. And how do you know that? That's because it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio. So we've got uh, a one in front of your carbonic acid, one as a coefficient for your bicarbonate ion, and then one for the hydronium ion. So it's all one-to-one -one mole ratio. At the end of the day, I'm getting 0 0.02 minus x, an x here, and x here. So if I just make a little space there, if I go ahead and write down the Ka1 expression, so remember we lost the first proton here, so this is going to be written in the form of Ka1, and that's going to be the equilibrium concentration of CO, HCO3 1 minus times H3O plus, divide that by H2CO3. So let me just go ahead and plug those values in there. And uh, the Ka1 is 4.3 times 10 to the negative 7. Your products, both of those are going to be just X, and your reactants on the bottom on the denominator is going to be 0 0.020 minus X. This may seem like an, a quadratic equation, and we're not, we always try to kind of minimize the quadratic equation, or you don't want to be kind of getting into solving a quadratic equation because we're not really doing an, a, a math problem here. We can ignore this particular x under one condition. If your given concentration, which is going to be 0 0.02, 
is about a thousand times bigger than your Ka value, which is 4.3 times 10 to the minus 7, then you can assume that x to be 0, or you can just literally ignore that. And clearly, we can say your 0 0.02 is much, much bigger than 4.3 times 10 to the minus 7. So you can say, assume. 0 0.020 minus x is going to be approximately equal to 0 0.020. A lot of time when you do these problems, you're going to have to make sure you specify any assumptions that you're going to be taking there. So once you do this assumption and when you go back and rewrite your equation, it's going to be 4.3 times 10 to the minus 7 equals to x squared divide that by 0 0.02. Now it's all about solving for x. So x squared is going to be 0 0.020 times 4.3 times 10 to the negative 7. And then I got to take square root on both sides to figure out what that x is going to be. So let's see. So it's going to be 9.27 times times 10 to the power of negative 5 molar. So remember, what was your x representing here? Well, your x is going to be representing the H3O plus concentration. So now I know my H3O plus concentration, and uh, that means I can go ahead and calculate my pH. So pH is going to be negative log of whatever concentration we got, which is 9.27 times 10 to the minus 5 and uh, we'll just do the math here. That's going to be about uh, 4.03. So that's going to be your final answer here. And uh, and then again, remember, you're not going to be worrying too much about the second dissociation because it's going to be so small that it's not going to make any difference in the overall concentration of H+. Let's look at this next one here. We have, we got, uh, we are asked to find the pH of this NH4Cl solution and the Kb is given. Well, if you're given the Kb, that means you must be dealing with either a base or you must be dealing with a conjugate acid. Now we're given the Kb of the NH3, but the original solution that we are given is NH4Cl. So remember, this can be easily broken down into NH4 plus plus Cl minus. Because Cl minus is just going to be spectator based on the solubility rules. All the ammoniums, um, compounds, they will dissolve in water. So we have NH4 plus. How does NH4 plus is related to the NH3? Well, clearly your NH4 plus is going to be the conjugate acid of the NH3. So if, I'm, if I have NH4 plus in the solution, I got to figure out what the Ka going to be for that, because that's a weak acid. And uh, we can use that equation where the Ka times the Kb is going to be equal to 10 to the minus 14. And I know the Kb, so I can figure out what the Ka is going to be. So this is going to be 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. So at the end of the day, your Ka is going to come out to be, let's say, 5.56 times 10 to the minus 10. Now, the rest of the problem is going to be very similar to what we just did on to the top or in the previous problem. I'm going to go ahead and write down an equation here. So NH4 plus aqueous plus water liquid. And that's going to set up an equilibrium with NH3 aqueous plus H3O plus aqueous. So I'm going to go ahead and make a ice table there. So we're starting out with 0.1 molar NH4 plus concentration here. I forgot to write down the plus there. Uh, we're going to ignore the water because that's not going to be a part of equilibrium constant expression as it's a liquid. 
and ammonia is going to be zero in the beginning, your hydronium ion is going to be zero. So assume I lose X amount of reactants, and in doing so, I would be making X amount of products. So at the end of the day, at equilibrium, we'll have 0.1 minus X for the reactants, and X and X for your products. So if I can figure out what the X is, which is going to be giving you the H3O plus concentration, then I can easily figure out the pH of the solution. So I already know the Ka value, so I'm going to go ahead and write down the Ka is going to be equal to X times X, so those are your two products we have. Divide that by 0.1 minus X, so I'll just go ahead and plug those values in now. So 5.56 times 10 to the minus 10, that's going to be equal to x squared divided by 0.1 minus x. So now you can easily assume that 0.1 minus x is going to be approximately equal to 0.1, and that's because your 0.1 is much, much bigger than 5.56 times 10 to the minus 10. So the criteria is this concentration needs to be at least a thousand times bigger than your Ka value or the Kb value. When you apply this assumption here, we're going to have 5.56 times 10 to the minus 10 equals to x squared and divide that by 0.1. So we'll figure out what that x is going to be here. So your x squared is going to be equal to 0.1 times 5.56 times 10 to the minus 10. And take the square root here and figure out uh, what's x going to be. So it comes out to be 7.45 times 10 to the minus 6. So remember your x concentration or x value here is going to be representing the hydronium ion concentration. And since I know the hydronium ion concentration now, that's going to be in molar, I can easily figure out the pH here by doing negative log of this 7.45 times 10 to the minus 6. So your pH is going to be 5.13. So that's going to be your final answer there. So remember your pH came out to be acidic, which makes sense because you're, you're starting out with a weak acid because NH4Cl was a conjugate acid of an NH3. What about this last one? You may want to do this on your own and see if you can figure that out. So I'm given the sodium acetate and I'm given the Ka of the acidic acid. So remember your sodium acetate is going to be the conjugate base. So this uh, sodium I can get rid of. So I'm only focusing on CH3, COO minus. So this is going to be your conjugate base of CH3, COO, H. And that's the Ka value we're given. We're given the Ka value of this acidic acid. So that means what's going to be the Kb value for that conjugate base. So I can go ahead and use that formula to be 10 to the minus 14, divide that by um, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Well, this is just uh, coincident there. Both our values are the same in the previous question and this question. Uh, so it's going to come out to be 5.56 times 10 to the minus 14. So when I'm writing the conjugate base here, I'm writing this reaction with water liquid, it's going to go ahead and make the CH3COOH aqueous plus OH minus. So remember it's a base, so it must be producing OH minus there. And now it's time to make an ice table here. So I'm going to change the color there. So when I'm looking at the ice table, we ignore the water because that's going to be not a part of equilibrium constant expression. We're starting out with 0 0.05 acetate, and then we don't have any of the products in the beginning. 
you lose X amount where you make X amount on the product side and then at equilibrium we'll have 0 0.05 minus X for the reactant and both of your react products are going to be indeed X so this X in this particular case is actually representing OH minus all right so you're not going to be directly getting the H plus concentration here but rather getting the OH minus concentration so something you need to uh, be careful with. So let's go ahead and write down the KB here. So your KB is going to be just X squared, which means both of your products are just going to be X, divided by 0 0.05 minus X. And we know the KB we have figured out to be 5.56 times 10 to the minus 10 and that's going to be equal to x square x square divided by 0 0.05 minus x and let's just go ahead and make this assumption again so it's safe to assume that your 0 0.05 minus x is going to be approximately equal to 0 0.05 and that's because your 0 0.05 which is the concentration is much much bigger than 5.56 times 10 to the minus 10. So after making that assumption, the when we rewrite this equation, this uh, it's going to become 5.56 times 10 to the minus 10 equals to x squared divided by 0 0.05, and you just got to solve for x now. So it's going to be 0 0.05 multiply 0 0.05 both sides. 5.56 times 10 to the minus 10 and then take square root on both sides. So when I do this math, let's see what that comes out to be. So we got 0 0.05 times 5.56 times 10 to the power negative 10. So that's going to be your 5.27 times 10 to the minus 6. So remember this actually represents an OH minus concentration. If you go back into into the equation there, this represents the OH minus concentration. So what you're going to be getting out of here, you're first going to be getting an a POH con uh, value. So your POH is going to be negative log of OH minus concentration, which is 5.27 times 10 to the negative six. So let's see what that's going to be. That comes out to be 5.28. And then, remember the question is to find the pH, not the pOH. So to find the pH, once you know the pOH, all you really got to do is subtract from the 14. So 14 minus 5.28 is going to give you 8.72. So this comes out to be a a basic pH and uh, that's completely okay because remember you started out with a base in the beginning you didn't really start out with an uh, acid so that's why it came out to be a pH over 7 so this is how you're going to be doing some of these problems that has weak acids or weak bases involved if you have any questions feel free to leave any comments in the section below